Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech, and today we are heading to Modern for a really sweet new take on, I guess, the affinity archetype, but with a twist. This is Mono Blue Forge, Mono Blue Pizza Oven, I guess, basically this sort of combo-ish artifacty Mystic Forge deck, and it comes to us from Tenchi, who did do a 5-0 finish in a league on Magic Online. So congrats to Tenchi on a really sweet deck, and a quick reminder before we break down Mono Blue Forge for Modern. If you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So one of the big questions about affinity in the modern format and these artifact style decks is, can they still compete and adapt in a world without Mox Opal, which had been traditionally one of the most important powerful cards in those style of decks? Well, this deck is the attempt to do something similar but without any mox opal necessary so the engine that drives our deck is mystic forge mystic forge little expensive at four mana but allows us to look at and cast the top card of our library if it is an artifact or a colorless non-land card and then we can exile a card so if we hit a couple of lands in a row we can get rid of it so in our deck the way we primarily abuse mystic forge is playing a bunch of cheap artifacts playing some things to reduce the cost on our other artifacts we don't actually have a lot of top of our deck manipulation so we're not going like infinite infinite with mystic forge but thanks to all of our cheap artifacts there's a good chance once this comes down we're able to cast three four five spells in a turn before we hit a couple of lands fizzle our mystic forge activation so that is kind of the primary goal of the deck is to use this as an engine to flood the board with cheap artifacts to help support this plan we have a way to reduce the cost of our artifacts actually two ways so chief engineer and ethereum sculptor these allow us to just get a discount on our artifacts ethereum sculptor just makes artifacts cost one less so all of a sudden one mana artifacts are free with mystic forge allowing us to play more and more cards keep churning through our deck chief engineer allows us to convoke artifact spells so we can tap random creatures to help pay for them which is actually really important with mystic forge that means if we can play like a free artifact it's technically generating mana because we can immediately tap it to play another artifact maybe with mystic forge maybe from our hand so all of our cheap artifacts are suddenly producing mana everything's a mana dork when we have a chief engineer on the battlefield so it's so powerful that we actually play it, even though we can't cast it off the top of our deck with mystic forge so these are the cards that give us tons of mana to cast tons of spells in one turn with mystic forge as far as the spells that we're casting with Mystic Forge, we have some artifacts that are just really cheap. Ornithopter, it's always free. So if it's ever on the top of our deck with Mystic Forge, we can just cast it. Signal Pest Vault Scourge, if we have a Chief Engineer or we have an Ethereum Sculptor, they are free as well. They're one mana, but they get reduced down to zero mana. And remember, once we have Chief Engineer, we're able to use them to Convoke as well. So Ornithopter is kind of generating mana with Convoke to cast our more expensive spells. Plus, these are evasive threats that aren't very powerful on their own, but Signal Pest can pump them and we have some other ways of pumping them as well. Then we have our two mana threads. Phyrexian Revoker just locks down a Planeswalker, something else with the activated ability. Can be one mana most of the time if we have a discount, maybe zero mana if we can stack up enough Ethereum Sculptors. Walking Ballista can get pretty big, or we can just cast it for two mana, start pinging stuff down. As far as closing out the game, we're going to go really wide with artifacts, then we're going to use Steel Overs here to pump them. We can just tap it to put a counter on each artifact creature. Suddenly our Ornithopter is dealing damage. Suddenly our Signal Pest is pumping our team and actually hitting for damage itself. So this is our way to get a ton of damage. Our other plan is our Throne of the God Pharaoh. So this is just a one-of because it's legendary, but since we're going to cast through most of our deck eventually with Mystic Forge, we will find it eventually, we will play it, and then it drains our opponent equal to the number of tapped creatures we have on our end step, which works incredibly well with Chief Engineer, because Chief Engineer, remember, allows us to tap our creatures to essentially produce mana things to convoke, so we could use Chief Engineer to tap all of our creatures without even attacking, or we could just attack with all of our random like ornithopters and evasive creatures to get our whole team tapped and potentially just drain our opponent for 5, 10 damage without ever having to deal combat damage. So that's our other way of closing out the game. The other sweet card in this deck is Thorn of Amethyst, which is a card that sees a lot of play in Vintage, but doesn't usually see too much play in Modern. It just makes non-creature spells cost one more to cast. This is essentially one-sided, 
since our deck is mostly creatures, and even if we are casting not creatures like Mystic Forge, we're getting a discount anyway from all of our other effects, so it doesn't hurt us too much, and this is non-legendary, so these stack up as we're going through our deck with Mystic Forge, eventually we're going to have every non-creature spell costing two more, three more, four more, which pretty much just locks a decent amount of decks out of the game. Doesn't do much against creature-based decks, but that's fine. We can deal with creature-based decks with our own creatures by attacking, but great against controlling combo, essentially just hard-locking them eventually if we can stack up enough copies. As far as the mana base, we get a little extra value there. Blink Moth Nexus as a creature, Waterlog Grove, a way to get through lands on the top of our deck, sacrificing it to draw a card with our Mystic Forge. Cavern, yeah, makes our stuff uncounterable. Ghost Quarter for Tron. So islands in the sideboard we get more artifacts so we have smuggler's copter hanger back walker as resilient threats for control type matchups smuggler's copter loose to our deck filters very powerful in grinding matchups hanger back walker dies twice essentially comes down with a counter makes a thopter when it dies so fights the removal spells hex parasite to take counters off of planeswalkers and other things but mostly good planeswalker hate and then graph digger's cage relic progenitist to shut down graveyard decks also graph digger's case itch on like collected company and that is mono blue forge the new and improved maybe affinity for modern now that box helpful is gone and that's been our instant deck deck for today so thank you so much for watching I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.